Hello, hello, hello. So I know we've been on a bit of a hiatus, so allow me to reintroduce myself. So my name is Sarah Bryant, and you're tuning in to Sarah's Opening Bell, the weekly wrap-up for stock market game participants and soon-to-be participants who are all looking for one thing, the opportunity to advance their understanding of the stock market and how it applies to the real world. Now, what makes these moments so special, other than the chance to spend some time with me, we believe at the Sigma Foundation that an informed investor is a smart investor. And that can only happen when learning about investing is easy to understand and relevant to our life. So that's what you're tuning into. So sit back, relax, and let's jump right in. So this week, there have been a number of hot topics, but I'm going to get into one that has been getting all of the buzz and some of you may still be trying to wrap your head around. So that's none other than what's going on with Silicon Valley Bank. So if you hadn't heard of Silicon Valley Bank, also known as SVB, I'm sure you've heard about them by now. So SVB was a regional bank that specialized in serving the venture capital community and startup tech firms. So when these firms made deposits, SVB kept a small portion of those deposits in cash and used the rest to buy long-term investments like treasury bonds. So this initially appears to be a good idea as investments such as those can result in steady and modest returns, at least while interest rates remain low. However, as we all know, interest rates began to rise. But it's not all due to a rise in interest rates. So because the bank's business was largely from the tech industry, when those leading clients, which were a mixture of technology startups and their executives, started to see a decline in their own funding, something, something that many startups experienced during and post-pandemic, they needed to withdraw from their accounts more just to make up for their own existing gaps. So Silicon Valley Bank also had a huge number of big uninsured depositors. Now you may be thinking, but I thought all money at the bank was insured. You've seen those large FDIC insured signs all over the bank. And yes, deposits are insured, but only up to $250,000. These clients were depositing a whole lot more than that, which also means that if a company ever needs a bulk of that money back, Doing so can really put the bank holding that money in crisis as it attempts to fulfill those client requests. So in order to fulfill them, the bank had to sell some of its investments at a huge discount. So once more of the tech industry got word of Silicon Valley Bank's loss, they panicked and startups rushed to pull out their money which resulted in one of the largest daily withdrawals in history. Close to 25% of Silicon Valley Bank's deposits, which accounted for a total of about $42 billion in a matter of only 24 hours. So this quick response by customers to withdraw their deposits is called a bank run and is usually due to a customer's loss of confidence in that bank. So in an effort to avoid even further collapse, the FDIC, which we mentioned, which by the way stands for the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, announced that it would take over the bank, which placed about $175 billion worth of SVB customer deposits under their control. Now, what did this mean for the markets? The collapse of SVB put a spotlight on the challenges that surrounded small and mid-sized banks, since those sizes tend to focus on more niche businesses and can be more vulnerable to bank runs than some larger banks. And investors were definitely concerned as shares of many regional banks experienced significant decline. First Regional Bank experienced the steepest decline with shares down 60% on Monday. Shares of bigger banks were not affected as much, so things, 
ones like Citigroup and Wells Fargo, they each fell about 7%. Bank of America fell more than 3% and JP Morgan dipped around 1%. So this is not too surprising since Silicon Valley Bank is small compared to some of the nation's largest banks. So Silicon Valley Bank's $209 billion in assets really pales in comparison to let's say the more than $3 trillion at JP Morgan Chase. So some investors were also concerned about the repercussions of being invested in funds which have exposure to the bank. So Silicon Valley Bank was owned by about 200 different exchange traded funds or ETFs. So thing, ones like Vanguard, State Street Global Advisors and BlackRock were actually some of the three largest shareholders in SVB. However, thanks to regional bank stocks bouncing back over the last week or so, prices of those ETFs also bounced back as well. So now may be a good time for you to go review your portfolio and see if you've positioned yourself for the unexpected. Are you invested in securities that can support you in the long term, such as bonds? So now's the time to take a look because markets are now open.